All right, check this out. We used to drink San Pellegrino. Now we're in Muy Peligroso. The president's true believers are convinced he's going to make them millionaires with Iraqi currency. Sounds about right. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's the dinar. That's the currency of Iraq. Yes. All right. You got my attention. Okay. It begins. Trump supporter Hayes Katseos. What? Fuck, fuck, fuck off. Fuck you. No. Ka- Hayes Katseos. Kats- whatever. Runs a North Carolina pool maintenance company. What have we been fuck saying? You. Literally, fuck you. small this business tyrant moron. All of this, our, is t- this is an algorithm. All of our most bigoted <laughs> and hysterical projections and imaginations of what the average Trump supporter is yep. like, their stupid names <laughs> and the dumb businesses that they own yep. and work for. It's are all, all true. true. It's all real, folks. And that, what do we keep saying? That they are um, ignorant hogs who are the most gullible people alive? (laughs) Yes. Guess what? That's also true. My my name is Roland Cracker Schmear. I I put refinish on Billy Big Mouth Bass. (laughs) (laughs) And these people think... The, the fact that they run a pool supply company infers upon them the status of some sort of heroic job creator and business wizard. Meanwhile, they're buying fun bucks. They're buying like old camel cash, thinking that it's going to turn into real money. <laughs> now, now, I have a special type of currency that only activates when the monster mash occurs. <laughs> I stand to make a handsome profit. I will donate Guys, up to all of it to Donald Trump's is, re-election. This is... <laughs> And again, keep in mind that uh, wait, wait, keep this in mind whenever you're scolded about like looking down on these people or being mean to them. Okay? Yeah. No, yeah, all these, <laughs> all these, like... all these people like make at least as much as podcasters. Oh, and yeah. they and they live in horrible little suburban hamlets where it costs nothing to live. They're just fucking assholes to everyone they meet. They yeah. just. D- just completely they're just miserable every st- they're miserable <laughs> miserable they meet. their names are idiotic <laughs> they're all all of their names are amon orange grove <laughs> they just sound like fucking idiots they sound like names that james bond checks into hotels under but with a food <laughs> item added randomly <laughs> in there like other investors in the incredibly long shot dinar scheme Katseos hopes that Trump and the Iraqi government will somehow revalue or uh-huh. RV the currency. Oh, well, see, there's a there's, bursting, a, there's bursting, a short thing, so that means it's smart and it's real because they have a little term boosting for it. its current value of less than point oh oh one percent of a dollar uh-huh. to three or four dollars. Sure, of course. Dinar, the country that is literally on fire all the time. Dinar supporters. No, Dinar promoters have claimed that near myth that near mythical event will occur for nearly a decade. But if it does, it would theoretically make a millionaire of anyone with the foresight to just put a few thousand dollars into Dinars. If it happens, it'll be awesome and there'll be a huge party at my Woo! house, Katseo said. I would, this lo- is, I would love to go to that party. This is I'm like, sure that party would kick ass. This is like believing that the Mahdi is Larry Kudlow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 500 years ago, these people would have been like, well, I guess like I'm either going to, you know, like most likely I'm going to die, but I am going to sail to this place. No one's ever been. I'm going to have to murder everyone on this continent to get the most gold ever. Yeah. But now it's just like they would if you just if you just like not even got a short person, you just like stood on your knees in a green jacket. We're like, <laughs> I'm the Lucky Charms leprechaun. You could take these people for anything. <laughs> Follow me to my pot yeah. of gold. What, well, 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 this is a... I have been praying for something like this. <laughs> Thank well, you, sir, Mr. Leprechaun. <laughs> While it's difficult to measure how many Americans have invested in the dinar, court papers related to dinar scams often mention millions of dollars worth of dinar purchases. Dinar holders regularly tweet at Trump and various Iraqi government Twitter accounts demanding to know when they'll finally enact the RV that will let the money flow in. That'll do it. And there are, uh, there will, of course, um, embeds uh, examples of some of these tweets. Uh, this is Betty J. Harris, who's adding real <laughs> Donald Trump. Mr. President, I know you're a businessman above all else. You can balance the American budget and save an American generation if you will only stabilize the Iraqi dinar. <laughs> what the fuck is his problem? Why isn't he doing <laughs> Why this? Why doesn't he, he do this? Asshole. What a fucking... I mean, what seriously. If, what if Trump loses re-election because it's just by the margin of people who got taken by the dinar scam? <laughs> it's dinar. just all people are like, well, President Trump could have done the RV, but... Now we can't send all our kids to liberty. Think, <laughs> no, thank you. To I'm you, not sir. even voting. I'm vo- 
voting for Camilla Harris. I'm just gonna I'm gonna drown myself in my swimming pool full of <laughs> discontinued Greek drachmas. We were go- we-, <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna have the greatest party ever. We we're gonna have one fountain. It was a Baja Blast fountain. <laughs> then if you were a drinking fella, next fountain, that's a Molson fountain. <laughs> then the other fountain, if you were a dipping fella, yeah, that's right. It's a skull fountain. <laughs> and then we were going to have live Jimmy Page, Jimmy Page and Jimmy Buffett. And we were going to call it the two Jimmy party. And if one of them died in that time, we were going to send my one nephew to one of his concerts to FaceTime it. And I was going to record it by sending up a camcorder in front of my other telephone. <laughs> This was going to be the finest party you have ever seen in South Carolina history. And now, like all plans of mice and men, it is a pile of ashes in my mouth, Mr. President. I will be voting for your opponent, Kirsten Gillibrand and Michael Avenatti, sir. My horrible twin sons are gonna we're gonna come out in that connected overalls from the gong show playing a giant harmonica. My my two strongest nephews were going to perform the fusion dance of Dragon Ball Z and create the ultimate nephew, the biggest nephew the world had ever seen. We were going to we were going to send nephew Alpha 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 Bravo to the border to secure to secure the border tactically. Now we cannot the, the, there is a gentleman who sold me the fusion beans for Dragon Ball Z. Now we can't afford them because you refu- you have refused to perform a business scenario on the Iraqi dinar, sir. I hope you have enjoyed winning than promptly losing my vote. My nephews remain separated and not nearly big enough to prevent the immigrant caravan from entering our union, sir. I have no jo- for choice but to vote for Antifa thug Howard Schultz. Thank you and good day, Donald Trump. I said when we were planning on doing this episode that I had probably the most controversial take I would ever have on on this show. Oh, boy. I like the Hillary people significantly more than these Obama fucking lizards. <laughs> I know I do like these people. These so people, like, like, the, like the people like in Hillary's orbit, you like better than the sort of yes. like, like the yes. supposedly. Yeah. Charming give me an ice world. chewing psychopath over these fucking. Give, not even that. Not even that. Give me Lenny Davis. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Give me give me fucking Felipe Reigns who at the height of like me too is like Monica, you stupid bitch. You ruined everything because at least they're loyal to their own dumb shit. At least Hillary kept on like the woman who gave her gum, whose husband was a pedophile just because they actually care about loyalty. These fucking cockroaches, they will hang out anyone to dry. They don't like any that pod save America world that Dan Pfeiffer is a part of. Just look into their eyes. You see nothing. They fly around the world poisoning themselves with airplane water so they can do live reads for slave labor meal prep companies. The Hillary people are like, it, they're freak stupid. At least they're passionate. Hey. At least they're like, think about all these people have ever done is subscribe to the news and work in a comms department for 30 years and then tell you how to argue with your racist uncle. <laughs> now you need to use facts. The Hill, think about the lives of the Hillary people before. You have Adam Pachinko Machine, who is like an orc cop. <laughs> <laughs> you have, right. you, you have, right. you, you have Peter, work. Peter Dow, who is a soldier and club musician. They're like real people. They're fucking freaks, but they're real people with blood and passion and loyalty. And and, and these Obama freaks, they don't give a shit. (laughs) They will hang out anyone to dry. They don't believe in anything. Did you see that fucking video that Jon Favreau did after Ocasio won? Because they knew they knew they knew they couldn't be like, oh, fuck her, because their biggest fear is people yelling at them. But they also knew that they couldn't say she was good, like because of what she believes in. Because they're the Joe Crowley people. So they literally put out a video where John Favreau is sitting in like a limited edition podcaster's chair <laughs> going like that he got from Mark Marin that Mark Marin scammed him for. And he's like, number one, you have to believe in yourself. <laughs> number two, talk to voters. And it's like, you rodent. You don't believe any of this. You're. It's like at least if Pod Save America was all Hillary people, like if it was like. Felipe Reigns was there, he'd be like, another stab in the back by the only <laughs> you piece of shit, Ocasio, this is your final warning. <laughs> Take out a fucking katana. <laughs> like they're, they're real. They're real. They, they have blood and fury, and it's sort of, they have it for the least passionate person alive, but they have it. Well, that makes it and more impressive. Yeah, it's amazing. It's they're, amazing. I hate these, I hate these former Obama comm staffers so fucking much they're so afraid of like any confrontation 
that they're like, no, actually don't campaign against Trump. Let's just invent 30 billion fact checking websites so someone else can do it. <laughs> you are pussies to your absolute core. You've never done shit like, oh my God. God, they won't die. Even, they won't even let a young hitter say Iran should have nuclear weapons on their own show. <laughs> yeah. No, but These uh, guys Felix, are... to sum it up, uh, the Hillary people, they must be loyal to their capo. No, that dude, that, I feel like an FBI agent <laughs> who's been like following the mob forever and I have this grudging respect of the Hillary people now. Because it's like, <laughs> you know, like the incompetence of like a near Tandon, at least it's like there's a human soul somewhere there. Mm. But, 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 I don't know. The fact that she gets barred out and fucking tweets till that's three true. in the morning. That's <laughs> real yeah, okay, you're That's right. real passion. That, that means she has some level of guilt. Whereas, yeah. like, do, do you think, like, Dan Pfeiffer is just, like, he literally doesn't think he's ever done anything, like, beyond just the most noble pursuit yeah. of the truth. Like, I feel like, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, I worked against those guys, but at least they had honor and loyalty and family. These new guys, they just kill each other all the time. Yeah. The Obama people, all you need to know about the Ob uh, Obama people versus the Clinton people is like, like the Clintons have been dragged down by all these freaks around them forever. And yeah, they fucked over people who weren't in the family, but in the family, like they will keep you on as dead weight forever. But Obama, like literally his pastor. His yeah, pastor, yeah, yeah. he was like, boom, <laughs> boom, look how bad I want it. Boom. Uh, you're right. Nira's getting, she's getting barred up. Yeah. She's getting barred up every night. Whereas these damn Pfeiffer or Favreau types, you, you all cowards don't even smoke crack. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're just sitting there drinking fucking, drinking smart water <laughs> and damn. fucking posting. Damn, no, this melatonin hitting. But I remember, uh, you know, back in like the, the height of like surge mania and, you know, uh, when everyone was just going, you know, creaming oh, themselves yeah. about fucking our General Petraeus. Including, like, war skeptic people. They all got, yeah. like, this is different. Oh, he, he believes in coin. Yeah. You know, he has the coin doctrine yep. or whatever. Uh, I, I just, ad admission never knew what that was. Oh, it, me it meant that way he thought that if you jumped on Iraqi's heads, it would be <laughs> a coin that, that varied, the amount varied on the size of the Iraqi. Right. And right. he thought that Marines who were you know, potentially at risk for IEDs, they could uh, use this piece of military equipment called the Tanukis. <laughs> <laughs> they could fly over the IEDs. Here's where I'm really going. Here's the real, the crown jewel of this piece, the reason I selected it. The talk I saw that seemed the most explicitly crafted towards young people was one by disgraced BuzzFeed editor and current TPUSA employee, <laughs> Benny Johnson. Benny Johnson, BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed, Benny. BuzzFeed Benny Johnson, who talked about the left's inability to meme. Oh, Johnson came out I on stage. Dude, I, all, every Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, I'm memeing on my family. I'm getting flashbacks. <laughs> they're cucks. I'm getting they're actual getting flashbacks on. to four years ago when Felix and I like first met BuzzFeed Benny, when oh, he was still yeah. working for BuzzFeed in New Hampshire at a Ted Cruz event. And he was just kind of ambling around the best way I can describe it is just livestock. Yeah. Um, and he was like, like he was like a cow chewing his cud because he was carrying around a, like a sack of candy. Yeah. It was like candy corn. It was like, it was a gross, not yeah. even good candy. It was like, yeah, he had like an imbecile snack pack. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was, it was like a fanny pack full of candy corn. <laughs> and he was dropping candy corn on the floor. Just this ambling imbecile. Just stepping on it, grinding it into the carpet without yeah. noticing. It was like, yeah, it was like they had like a, a, a horse who endured a head injury <laughs> there. He was like very high energy, but accomplishing nothing. Like it, this was, this was a cursed event. We saw Ted Cruz, Benny Johnson, and Frank Luntz. Ugh. All at the same event. It's like a VFW hall or something. Yeah, and it was like more, it was or like, a Mr. Universe pageant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was like Frank Lutz was like just standing in a corner being interviewed by like some nobody from like you know Talking Heads TV or Bloghead TV or whatever <laughs> the fuck those places are, and being like, well, you know, the establishment lane still making its choice, but Trump's clearly out of the establishment lane, and you know, a talk for nobody by nobody <laughs> enjoyed by nobody. Benny was just wandering around, uh, just leaving his cud chewings everywhere. Just lumbering around, <laughs> eating candy. Yeah. With this glazed expression on his eyes. <laughs> Ted right. Cruz. Ted like, Cruz I don't even. I don't even know what content he was producing. Right. Yeah, I don't. There wasn't like a camera. With, I think he was writing one of those articles that were like, you know. In, tw in 2016, one thing's for sure, the memes are heavy. And like, nobody was reading it. That was the most aggravating part about like all of these 
like Ben Smith at BuzzFeed, like pushing Benny Johnson for some reason as like uh, like a kind of right of center guy who could talk, speak in millennial language is that nobody under the age of 40 ever read any of that shit. No, no. They gave Benny, they flew Benny to Fort Hood. <laughs> like, <laughs> sent him out. Him to no take one... a picture of a Johnny Rockets. Yeah. Also, if you don't believe this, I have video of it. Yeah, no, we do. I, I remember this clear as day. This was like, oh, man. This was our apocalypse now, that trip. <laughs> and we're going back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going, we're All going right, back so, in the so, shit. All right, this is pretty good. So if far. I get memed on, I swear to God, yeah. you guys. All right, all right. So, <laughs> all, officer memed on, requesting backup. So repeat the sus with the suspect is posting about Harambe in 2020. <laughs> I am being memed on right now. All right, so this is pretty good so far, right? So you're imagining. I mean, this already took you on like a Prussian reverie. Oh yeah, too, back to New Hampshire. I remember CPAC. Yeah, very uh, heavily. So, yeah. Imagine, okay, so Benny Johnson takes the stage to give a talk about the left's inability to meme. Okay, right on. you ready for this? Ready for it. Johnson came out on stage accompanied by someone dressed as Left Shark. Remember that one? <laughs> Remember that oh one? My what? What? Remember uh, Left Shark? Left Ooh, Shark. Left Paul. Sh- hey, Paul, you enjoy the Left Shark, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm just hearing uh, just chopper blades and machine gun fire. <laughs> Who's was in charge here? I thought it was you. Was that five years ago? Left Shark was Katy Perry's Super yeah, Bowl yeah, halftime. That was more than that was like years seven ago. years ago. I, <laughs> I feel like I didn't live in New York when yeah. that happened. Okay, yeah. so Benny Johnson comes out on stage by someone dressed as Left Shark firing a t-shirt cannon into the crowd and screaming, who's ready for some memes? Dozen, <laughs> dozens of geriatrics were killed by this t-shirt cannon. It just like it just punched a hole through their soft heads, their 90-year-old heads. And their last their last memory, the last thing they saw was a t-shirt that had like fucking Chuck Norris saying <laughs> like kicking AOC's head off. Just, just fucking just fucking create an exit wound the size of a basketball in their fucking big heads. Okay. Fun had by all at TPUSA Youth <laughs> Summit. Dozens dead. Before he got into WeWork, Adam Newman's first billion dollar ideas were a collapsible woman's shoe. I lo- tried to find as much information on this as I possibly could because I don't know what that is. As a woman who often wears shoes that were designed for women, I don't know what he means. I assume it's like, uh, I don't know, like, like a dress shoe that you know, when you did that's uncomfortable. So, you know, you want to take it off at the end of the night, you know, like uh, like 4 a.m. on New Year's Eve. You see women like holding their <laughs> high heels on the subway. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, that's so, a hot look. Why would he take that away from us? I guess he thinks that's not uh, efficient. He wants to make them more portable. What, what if, if, OK, OK, OK. okay. Well, I, uh, it's like woman. She's got her high heels on. Like this is the commercial for I'm joining him in his shoe <laughs> venture. Um the first like twenty seconds of commercial, just her feet. <laughs> <laughs> no sicko like, shit. What is this, this isn't, selling? This is nothing. No sicko shit. But like, she's walking around. She's like, you know, I've got your reports. I've got the productivity sheet. You know, I don't know what people do in an office. As far as I know, they're just sort of like using AOL and Instant Messenger all day. I don't know what goes on, but we can fill that in. And she's just pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. And you see like her shoes against like the like wingtips of the guy with the corner office. Again, I've never worked in an office. I don't know. Uh, And then cut to Olympic platform in like a CrossFit gym that's like CrossFit, Everosity. You know, one of those made up words they use for the gym. And she like removes the heel part and like fucking puts on like a flat part. And boom, they're Olympic lifting. They're like tactical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then... Then, like, we're still on our feet. We're still on our feet. <laughs> this commercial is 25 minutes long. <laughs> and she's at a the Bushwick art show. And she turns them into foam posits or some shit. I don't know. But that's, that's what you would you'd do them for. While his partner wrestled a suspect with a gun in his waistband to the ground, a riled-up crowd gathered around. Pop, 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 pop. Back out of here. Back out of here, another officer shouted. We just had gunfire. Rob Bechtel, a D.C. police reserve officer who watched a video that surfaced online of the two-minute scuffle, said he'd never seen anything like it. All this is happening while someone is cranking off rounds, he said. And right there, with some other officers, is a Hillary staffer. <laughs> <laughs> that Holy shit. would be Pachinko Machine. 
a part-time <laughs> D.C. Reserve officer and the director of grassroots engagement for the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. During the week, Pachinko Machine 30 sits in a small cubicle at the campaign headquarters in Brooklyn, surrounded by standing desks and beanbags, fielding calls from volunteers across the country. But on weeknights, when he can, Pachinko Machine still drives the streets on patrol in the district. Wait a minute. So he, in the weekends, he goes from New York to D.C. to drive around in a patrol car and pretend to be a cop. Essentially, yeah. This Jesus was, this, Christ. Uh, this is bylined uh, uh, January 2016 during the campaign. This is uh, what the Orc Cop movie is based on. <laughs> <laughs> Bright, Adam Bright Pachinko yeah, Machine. They, so they read this article and they were like, they let this horrifying creature be a police officer. <laughs> you know what? He looks a lot like the He's old not. orcish. He has no hair. He's totally yeah, bald. Like, He's weird. got kind of pointy ears. <laughs> Folks, I'm it's like if he had vitiligo, he would be the fucking orc cop. He likes to go after the bad guy, the thrill of the hunt, said Bechdel, a, fe- a friend and fellow when volunteer. He, when, he, when that guy arrests Perps, is he's like, you just failed the Bechdel test. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the singer of the week right there. <laughs> Felix gets the Amazon gift card of the week. Let's oh, hear it for Felix. Thank you, boys. <laughs> I was actually sitting on that one. I was looking for an opening (laughs) the moment I heard it. And here it is. Here's the money quote. Uh, In 2009, he ran for an open House of Delegates seat from Arlington. Bill Clinton did a robocall on his behalf. He came in third. (laughs) Meanwhile. Oh, you got that that shiny Clinton magic. Meanwhile, he finished his college degree and met his future wife, future wife, Kirby Hogue. (laughs) She wasn't. <laughs> is there any normal name in Democrat world? It's no. like it's like. No. All, all right, so you believe in means testing and a sensible approach to NATO. Here's your new name. Your name before was uh, was Chrissy Jones. Your name now, you guessed it. It's Toot- Tootsie Flop <laughs> with, with, with three P's and an umlaut. You are, Enjoy. You are Waluigi Grinder. <laughs> Kind of feel like Trump only really wanted to be president so that he could just be on everyone's TV yeah. at any time, time he yeah. wanted. So I mean, like, like he might just be going. He he might you know go feed Al Castro and just kind of give speeches constantly. You know, like you know he wakes up in the morning. He's like, folks, folks, we got to do something about these bath mats. They're too thin. <laughs> They're too thin. The bath mats in the White House. They're too thin. And you go into the shower, right? You turn on the water, drip, drip. Drip. I called the guy, is something wrong with this? No, sir, it's just a restrictor. Sam, we were saying that, like, the best way to prevent anything from happening was to show Trump the clip of that huge gator in Florida. <laughs> because he's just, he's so easily redirected that he would just be like, we have to get the gator. It's too big. <laughs> he just, he, he sends, like, bad. fucking U.S. CENTCOM to occupy Florida. Meanwhile, they don't pass anything. There are no drone strikes. Like, that's the end of the All American Empire. All the resources Empire. are being dedicated to that gator. He said about how Rand Paul would be like... Oh, yeah, Rand Paul would be like, Mr. Trump thinks that there's a magic solution to beating the gator. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one... One thing that the gator has against Mr. Trump's jackbooted thugs. It's called the Constitution. (laughs) If President Trump wishes to use letters of marquee to apprehend this prehistoric (laughs) reptile, I will be the first to support him. (laughs) But he is not doing that. Flynn, I mean, he's a guy, he didn't, he... He didn't join the military and become a career soldier for the money, presumably. He is animated by this holy war view of the world as a clash of civilizations between the West and the, or- the godless Orient. You know, he- the idea of him just turning and deciding in his, do- in his final years, I'm going to just try to get the biggest paycheck, I don't think that seems really in character for him. I think that his son, his oafish nitwit son, has somehow put him into a vast jackpot that he's frantically trying to get out of. I mean, I don't know. Those guys like switch their view of the world all the time. I mean, Flynn always I'm not talked it's about consistent, it. but I agree. He's a true believer in whatever he believes in at that moment. Yeah, yeah. No, they but they flip around their geopolitical beliefs all the time. So, like, like Flynn before AKP just dangled a publisher's clearinghouse check in front of him. It was like, you know, Erdogan's an Islamist. He's he's doing deals with ISIS. Blah blah blah. Like a lot of which was true. But then they were like, 
what if you could – what if uh, – I don't know what Michael Flynn buys with this money. Probably like slippers with the 101st Airborne Division logo on them. <laughs> you can buy Jag a bunch of those. Yeah, just yeah. – he's like, why do you keep buying box sets of Jag? You, he's, what if I lose one? That's tactical preparedness. <laughs> you want yeah. uh, Jag redundancy. That's just professionalism. Yeah, so then, I mean, then he finds out about Gulan, and he's like, oh, he's more Islamic. That's worse. And also I get – but like – like, those guys do that all the time. Like, Trump famously sp- spent the campaign talking about how Saudi Arabia did 9-11. And then he goes there, and they're nice to him, like, once. And he's like, yeah. hey, actually, I, they didn't. I, I still I still think that Michael Flynn Jr. bought $100 million worth of Dale Earnhardt memorabilia on credit. <laughs> and now they owe it big time with interest. And so they got to get the cash any way they can. Michael Flynn well, Jr. Well, no, he didn't lose it all on the Earnhardt. Uh, merchandise. He also bought a bunch of Jeff Gordon merchandise uh, to make an effigy. <laughs> how strongly that's just, he that's feels. That's just wasting money. I he, 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 he bought a bunch of uh, pumpkin futures and held them too long like Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> He, he invested I, in tulips and he didn't yeah, see the bubble. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm really getting into Mike Jr. mindset, would I really think the thing that got him on Hawk was gambling on esports. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely that. Don't, don't bet against the South Koreans. <laughs> no, he yeah, definitely he did that. The, he bet on a, on like a people from a country with very slow internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he's like, put me, give me three million markers on Malta. <laughs> he was like Le Chief, but with uh, esports. I thought the Lithuanians were due. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's touching that like it's a it's a father and son project to yeah. work on together. Yeah. It's just like when Trump you like, ever works with his sons. No, yeah. No, no, and no. the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. <laughs> it's yeah. like if you and your dad like, why I go in to catch the galoon. <laughs> uh, it's like if you and your dad restored like a classic car together or dreamt up a cockamamie uh, treasonous, semi-treasonous <laughs> plot to kidnap a charter school this is, guy this and send him like, to a, 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 a Turkish prison island. I this wish is, I could do fil- Field of Dreams with my dad where we have some caper involving helping the Syrian government. Like at the end where he's like, Dad, do you want to play catch? But he's like, Dad, do you want to kidnap a <laughs> Turkish expatriate and send him to a prison island? At the end of the day, everyone making fun of the Flynn's, including us, is jealous of them. Everyone, jealous, yeah. Yeah. everyone wishes they had a relationship with their dad. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say. Michael, Michael Flynn is a thought. He's a pog. <laughs> he's a snack. <laughs> he's a freaking nasty hoe. Well, he looks He's good. a goddamn meal. <laughs> yeah. He's not even a snack. Well, I was just, the, 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 a nasty the thing, bitch. The thing I, that I love Strava. Michael Flynn to bust my pussy open. And tell, me, <laughs> tell me about uh, the Islamic <laughs> designs of the world. <laughs> I want Michael. If a, if a guy shows up with a fucking clenched jaw and a copy of Gorilla Mindset, he can hit my back walls any fucking time of day, dude. If a guy's like, I got fired as uh, I got fired in two federal level intelligence positions because I'm really stupid. I'm like, just fucking take a caterpillar bulldozer to my pussy, <laughs> like it's the West Bank, dude. <laughs> Hello, do you have a letter of Mark to enter my residence? Yeah, uh, hey Rand, uh, it's your neighbor. Uh, just noticed that uh, you've been digging a large ditch between our property lines, and I don't think that's covered by any easements with the city. Wondering what's going on, buddy? A ditch is only a moat when it's not fully grown. <laughs> now, I'm building a moat. Because in the Articles of Confederation, they enumerated our right to put sea monsters that <laughs> demarcated our property between us and hip hop gangs, jack booted thugs, and Planned Parenthood. Oh, well, I mean, I understand that totally, Rand, but you know, my grandkids that come over here sometimes, I don't want them falling into a moat. Especially if there's going to be sea monsters, and I really need to know more about that if I'm going to sign off on any of this. Well, uh, according to maps of the Orient, they have a new type of alligator over there, <laughs> the likes of which those of us in the West have not seen. But uh, your, 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 grand, your grandkids, they don't have a right not to be eaten. I have a right to have a moat. <laughs> you don't have a right to not enjoy my moat. Yeah, I'm not going to enjoy your moat, Rand. I'm going to need you to fill in these holes before someone gets hurt, please. The only thing that's getting hurt is the Fourth Amendment. 
<laughs> You've illegally entered my property and tried to enforce your personal preferences on my right to have uh, river dragons, uh, uh, tributary <laughs> creatures, an all variety of slimy, slimy uh, crustacean types that will prevent outsiders from entering my domicile and harming me. This is it. This is your last chance, Rand. I've been a good guy about this. I sent you a bunch of letters. You've got to re- fill this fucking hole. I consider myself a gentleman, but you've left me with no choice. I challenge you to a debate. <laughs> okay. How about your ass debates my fucking foot? How about that? Well, since neither of those can emit words, I fail to see how that <laughs> is going to happen. I can see why you... Your, so your objection to the moat is so great because you can only understand force. Oh, 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 this, oh, argument ab absurdum. Oh, of course, ad hominem. Oh, God. Oh, God, Jesus. Oh, no. You, you, you hear a permaband from my residence. <laughs> Damn. Uh, fighting Rand Paul. Rand Paul's the fighting this senator. Now, pain I, don't hurt. It's not in the Constitution. <laughs> Mind over matter. If, it, if it's not in the Constitution, it doesn't matter. You're telling me I know kung fu. No, Rand. You just get your ass kicked all the time. <laughs> I like when you do it. It's just like. Uh, if you had allowed me to dress like the Matrix twins, <laughs> then this maybe the fight would have turned differently. They have dreadlocks, but they're well, not only white gentlemen, <laughs> but albino, one could say. It makes you think. It makes you scared. It makes you excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you guys have any other uh, fun like little takeaway moments or speakers that I've, that I've missed uh, from the convention so far? I mean, would you agree with me that like overall it's been mostly a grim and boring spectacle? Yeah. It's been a snooze. My main takeaway is that it was far more dull and shitty than the DNC, which is incredible. I expected fireworks. We all expected fireworks. But, I mean... That's what happens when you have neocon Don, and he's no longer the anti-establishment candidate. You just yeah, get, you, gotta you, get Bob Do- you get Bob Dole, Mitt Romney, George H. W. Get their conventions. That's what we had. We had a billion people go up there and say, "I made three hundred thousand dollars last year because uh, I own a, a, a antique stamp business, and Donald Trump's going to lower my capital gains mm-hmm. so I can I can you know adopt another kid and make them evangelical." Horrible. Horrible. Not the insane spectacle that we saw in 2016. Uh, I was just blown. You know what? This convinced me that they'll lose. It was so the fucking dull. I was like, they just don't have it anymore. I mean, the only way they, the, the Democrats keep trying to throw, though. Pelosi oh, yeah. today going like, uh, Matt, your prediction came true. Called Pelosi it. went, I'm, Called it. we're not going to platform this fashion. <laughs> yep, yep. I said that. By I having said a debate. That what, there's that, every incentive to prevent Biden from debating because you can whack him out with as much uh, uh, Ibogaine as you want, but you don't know what he's going to do on the live stage when he has to answer questions. And the, the, the way to get around that without just admitting that his brain is turned to Swiss cheese is to say, well, do we want to validate the president of the United States? <laughs> do, do, yeah. do we... <laughs> if we stop you're giving running the attention, for president, he'll go away. Yeah. 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 I, uh, you're running yeah, for president, so and fucking, you're running for really president. Do. I'm sorry. The contempt- they're 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 running for president on the explicit platform of we need someone to stand up to Donald Trump, save for if we ha- we have to be in a room with him, speaking to him for over an hour. No, yeah. we can't do that. Yep. I'm sorry. Like yep. that makes you look so fucking weak. Yep. It makes you look like you're ducking him when you should be relishing the opportunity to fucking be on stage with him. Yeah. And by the way, guys, this just came across the transom right before we started recording. Uh, Trump calls for drug tests before debate with Biden. Listen to this. <laughs> does, does President does Trump is calling for drug tests. That was President Trump is calling for drug tests to be administered before the first presidential debate with Democratic nominee Joe Biden next month. Trump made the demand in an Oval Office interview with the Washington Examiner on Wednesday, saying he noticed a sudden improvement in Biden's primary debate performance against Senator Bernie Sanders in March. He offered no evidence to support a suggestion that the improvement could have been the result of drugs. 
Uh, nobody thought he was going to win, Trump said, because his debate performances were so bad, fr frankly, his best performance was against Bernie. We're going to call for a drug test, by the way, because his best performance was against Bernie. It wasn't that he was Winston Churchill because he wasn't. It was a normal, boring debate, you know. Nothing happened. And we're going to call for a drug test because there's no way. You can't do that. I just, he's yeah, right, he's not way. wrong. He, he, he's sees, he sees, he sees, he knows. Remember how he was completely off of the grid for a month after that debate? It took at least that long for his brain to recover from getting yeah. the fucking drug from Crank ejected directly into his neck. <laughs> it's like the end of every X Men movie when Wolverine takes part in this massive battle where he like gets impaled by an eye beam and you yeah. he has to recover he has to regenerate over a month that's what happens every time they just fucking put a vivan's eye droppers in biden's in biden's but this is a perfect example of the way that the democrats the, their problem and the thing that might lose them this race still uh is 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 that they're in their little chamber and they think that they think that the etiquette and they think that the internal logic of their system of manners is universal and even outside, even out, at, just outside of the realm of, of like Democrat voters, because she says, we don't want to, I don't think there should be a debate because he doesn't deserve it. He's been a naughty boy. Uh, I mean, that makes sense to Democrats because they bought the deplatforming thing as a meaningful concept. If you don't know what that is or care and haven't absorbed the reasoning, it just sounds like you're ducking Trump because you're afraid of him because your candidate's nine million years old. And, and that is, that is what's so. To bring it full circle, with Twitter isn't real life. It's amazing what is and isn't real life for the Democrats. Yeah, because the stuff that the left liberal sphere uh, online in the hyper media consumer bubble, everyone from Warren diehards to Bernie voters who still keep drinking that garbage and vote straight dick ticket Democrat every time, even though they get screamed at and called racist. Um, the things that they don't take health care card check. Anything that would make anyone's life better, uh, maybe a less interventionist foreign policy, things like that. They are just they are screamed at for that. You are a piece of shit if you want that. What do you think this is? You think your timelines the world? No one wants this crap you want, even though it's the most broadly supported stuff. But the stuff they do take except for take eighty percent sort of, of the Democratic Party. Exactly. Exactly. This is the most broadly popular stuff. But the stuff they do take is this sort of weird merger of sort of uh, like anarchist left language that's been picked up by liberals since 2017 where you could use it when you know Bernie gets endorsed by Joe Rogan oh are you platforming this you could use it when your your candidate is too decrepit to debate and you hate Americans so much you don't want us to have one goddamn fun thing this year one thing just one, give us, give us old this old jabbering at one another for god's sake give me three debates I will vote for this old piece of shit please <laughs> Please, and I will up. fucking. I'll move to fucking. It's I'll move to. You turn Minnesota into a swing state because you <laughs> suck so fucking much. You suck. That a fucking blue state. You turn it into a fucking swing state. But if you just give me this debate, you old wet piece of shit. I'll just fucking vote for him. I'll go. I'll fucking buy a house right now. Just like, just fucking give us this one thing. We can't fucking do anything. I live in fucking New York. I can't even buy mango flavored vapes anymore. They cut Medicaid, but that's going to save public health. Just give me this fucking debate. Jesus Christ. No, no. <laughs> it would be rewarding bad behavior. Nope. Yeah. nope, nope. Can't have it. We would be rewarding bad behavior. We don't want to reward bad behavior. And that's that, that shows this is where the Democrats are doomed because... They used to at least be able to sell bullshit that was like in the framework of the broader cultural context. Now they can only bullsh sell bullshit to Democrats. You have to already have accepted. You have to have already signed on to their world for their bullshit to work. Yeah. No, I can't. I can't. I can't even buy a fucking gun. I can't buy a fucking gun, much less a delicious melon sour vape. <laughs> and I'm a 30 year old man. Why well, can't just. Let Joe talk about a hot dog stand for three hours. It's all I fucking... It's the only thing I wanted this year. The only fucking thing, you fucking it's, pieces of shit. Going through the filing cabinet, you find uh, ledgers, uh, accounting books for the pizzeria. Yeah, dude, is there anything suspicious on there? Like, it's, you know, cheese. Do you have any accounting skill? <laughs> Matt, do you have any account... <laughs> Fuck! All right, roll None your... Just have... roll your spot hidden rifling through uh, the books. I badly fail. <laughs> Shit.
Can I use li- I light the cabinet on fire? <laughs> accident. Can I use library uh, roll uh, skills, library uh, usage, or occult on any I'll of this I'll let stuff? you roll library usage. I have a high library skill. Seven roll it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> None of you understand how numbers work or that sort of thing. You have people. Yeah, that's just for Jews, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood what happens when you multiply a number by another one, but I know what happens when you rhyme as fast as shooting a gun. The same fear that I felt in the hills of France is the same feeling I get when I'm on stage sagging my pants. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> okay, this that reminded me of the thing that I thought of last night. Uh, okay. With the new character for the show. Oh no! Oh boy! No, this is a good. You know, this is a good one. Okay. Okay. We're ready. Um, the manic pixie dream cop. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that sounds real right, bad. I have some stuff written he, down here. Oh no! He just wants to, you know, shoot in the rain. Okay, here's what's happening. You bag of shit. We're getting nachos and sundays because it's freaking a maze ball, Ooh. and your slime ball boss doesn't appreciate you. And we're going to put on a musical starring everyone in town. And then he puts a Sig Sauer pistol in the mouth of the mop-headed shoegaze pr- uh, protagonist guy's mouth. <laughs> or is that an issue, you cocksucker? <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Hey, dirtbag, get your fucking pussy on the pavement. Let's get tattoos first thing in the morning. Life has to be fucking spontaneous or what's the point? You worthless fucking bag of shit. I should put a lead in you right now. Ooh. It's very bad. Yeah, it's very bad. Making me sad, making me feel bad. You don't like you don't you don't like this guy. I really don't like him at all. <laughs> I would I would not like to cross paths with this gentleman. The manic pixie dream no, police officer. No, no, no. Thank you. Swipe swiping left on that well, guy. I it's mean, Garden State Trooper. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we good. already have the title. All right. Now the movie just writes itself. I mean, this is in the wake of the last project we worked on, the Root for Cops. Yes. <laughs> hey, this is. Uh, this is blue, st- blue, mag- blue excellence. Yeah. <laughs> it has the headphones. It's like, this is disturbed. It'll change your life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, th- this one is, it's, it's, it's hard to segue into because it's so fucked up, but I feel nonetheless obligated that we really do have to talk about this because it was probably the thing that was most in the front of my mind all week long. And I'm talking, of course, about this video uh, and of Daniel Shaver, this guy being killed in a hotel hallway by a police officer with his uh, his own personal AR-15, and then his subsequent acquittal this week. Yeah, is, which is, is, is it, interesting. This has been this has been a year since this happened. This happened in 2016. And they suppressed they suppressed the video until the day he was acquitted. Basically, they I mean I honestly think at this point there's an understanding and the people in power that basically there's a limited amount of time after something happens where people can like absorb it or like move on. And if that video had been known for a long time, like the Rodney King video had been, and then after people had heard about it and thought about it, it turned into, well, what's this going to mean? And then he got acquitted. I think you would have had much bigger protests, much more of a big national hoopla. But because you say at the same time, this happened and he was acquitted, well, where does the energy go? Well, well, yeah, did it- the jury see the video? You know, yes, they saw the video. They, saw, okay. they did not get to find out that this fucking little dipshit, this fucking Ed Hardy ass fucking manly with shitty tribal tats who looked like fucking Brandon Wardell with a fucking <laughs> fragile X syndrome. What if uh, the cop blasted? Civilians? But he had an air, he had an AR fifteen <laughs> that he had personally paid to have engraved with the words "You're fucked." Jesus. Yeah, Christ. I mean, so this was, I think, the video itself and the ensuing uh, cover-up was sort of similar to another uh, police shooting in the last few years, the Laquan McDonald shooting in Chicago that Rahm Emanuel famously covered up during his election against Joey Garcia, where he probably would have lost. I mean, Cook County is a place with uh, sometimes very low voter engagement because people correctly assume that the fix is in and there's really nothing you can do against the horrible sons and daughters of Daly's personal Shabiha that the CPD <laughs> started off as. But um, it was the same sort of thing. I mean, it's that there is an unfortunate truth in this that the Shaver shooting is going to ultimately get more outcry from people because it is a white guy versus Laquan McDonald, a black teenager. But they're both like just horrifying spectacles where the person is not presenting any threat and in Shaver's case literally begging for his life and hold on a minute though guys 
He was begging for his life, but while the cop was demanding that he crawl towards him for some reason that makes no fucking sense since he was on the ground, they could have put cuffs on him at any time. Instead, they decided to do this deadly ho- hokey pokey with him. Okay. And then while he's tr- crawling on the ground, he reaches back to pull up his shorts. That's fear and that ended life. his life. Yeah, you gotta uh, do it. To me, like uh, you know, the, the video is one of the worst thing, fucking things I've ever seen. It's indescribable, and the worst part about it is this, like as you said, this indecipherable list of command, like just commands that they're barking at this bewildered, terrified man who, again, is completely incapacitated, lying face down on the ground with his hands out. Okay, young man, listen to my instructions and do not make a mistake. You are to keep your legs crossed. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. You are to put both of your hands, palms down, straight out in front of you. Push yourself up to a kneeling position. I said, keep your legs crossed. I didn't say there's a conversation. Keep put your hands in the air. Hands up in the air. And they're like, no, like crawl forward. No, slower. Yeah. Hand, left hand behind right shoulder. Yeah. Like, Cross your knee. Like that yeah, one point, yeah. he uncrossed his ankles, and the guy lost it. Shit. Like he pulled a fucking gun out. But no, no, cross your ankles. Like, what do you think he's doing? This is. Does a- he got the fucking uh, a 007 stabby foot shoe? <laughs> this is every single one of these fucking pussies. I mean, people always go, well, do you think, you know, most cops don't just charge their firearms? And that's fucking stupid because all them the ones that don't end up covering for guys like this but they get into it so they can tell somebody what to do that guy's dream he played fucking rainbow six or some shit when he was just a pimply faced teenager like we all were but he internalized whatever lessons from his life to mean that he one day he could bark those commands at the end of a weapon and because it would be just some fucking you know father of two uh, mewling on the ground that he could say whatever he wants he would get no consequence and if he killed him on fucking periscope and got the hearts going nothing would happen to him they love the fucking co- the militarization of cops I mean it's about equipment and it's about things you know the, what fucking Bradley fighting vehicles and F-22s they get to you know apprehend teenagers that are loitering in an abandoned Home Depot (laughs) drinking Mad Dog but it's also about their persona that training reflects on them and they love to hear themselves say those like polysyllabic military words. Triangulate your position, sir. You are perpendicular to the ground. I need you in a. We were making an optical assessment. Ne- like yeah. we need you in a fire negative scenario. And I mean, Do not turn this op kinetic by reaching for your shorts. <laughs> I mean, yeah, every fucking cop, like in the last, who's joined the force in like the last decade with those like sort of I go to the gym two times a week biceps and fucking. Jax Teller's barber tattoos. <laughs> they all have that fantasy that they thought they could have been green berets, but they had like a they had like a prehensile tail or so, something. Uh, okay, first things first. Brian Singer is a better person than Barack Obama. Pedophilia. <laughs> pedophilia is a condition. It's not a condition to drone uh, strike drone children, strike, yeah. not persecute bank- bankers. Brian Singer can be rehabilitated, but Barack Obama uh, cannot be. Uh, number two. Okay. Uh, we have statues of the founding fathers. Why do we have to take down R. Kelly's music? That's more Tariq Nasheed. But yeah. we're still rolling. We're still rolling. We're still rolling. Give me an event. Give me an event. Um, Social yeah. event. Uh, government shutdown. All right. It's interesting that people who every day complain about the Bodanga, you know, being closed uh, for whatever reason, uh, but accepted as part of their wacky urban elite lives in New York City. Uh they think that a government shutdown is the crisis of all crises, and it's more anti-Trump hysteria. Uh, you know, uh, banks close on holidays all the time, Jewish holidays all the time, and uh, I just don't see the difference between that. I mean, wouldn't the observance of a wall be seen as religious? If it was a religion, it would be okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, suck that, my dick. Yeah, put, yeah. You guys <laughs> fucking suck. I got you. Bit you. Undefeated. Undefeated. Twenty nineteen. Never lost a game. Give me a hit me hit me hit me. Uh, okay, um, that bank shooting in Central Florida. People die every single day in the nation known as Africa. I don't see you crying about it. Let's go. Hit me hit me hit me. <laughs> um, is there going to be a State of the Union address? It's still up in the air. It's interesting to me that the political media is so focused on uh, one speech when there are uh, millions of speeches every day. <laughs> Whenever when, when people are talking, that's a speech. Yeah, that's right. And the that's media right, d- doesn't. That's yeah. right, dude. 
There are people who choose not to speak. All right. And, yeah. Keep going. I'm getting warmed up. Uh, uh, H bomber guy raises a quarter million dollars on Twitch for mermaids, the trans youth uh, charity. All right, you really have to stretch to get a contrarian take on this. Oh, what what the fuck am I talking about? Easy, easy. Oh, really? On Jeff Bezos's uh, streaming service? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Chiching! Boom! Headshot. Dude, you give me any event, I'll come up with the most obtuse, annoying take on it. Undefeated. We're in this. We're fucking in this. Uh, no, just Matt, keep giving me Matt, Matt, feed, feed Felix uh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a news I'm event. fucking unstoppable today. Uh, of the uh, coup in Venezuela. Uh, technically, there's a coup every two years in the House of Representatives. <laughs> <laughs> they just choose to re-elect, re-elect the speaker. But I don't see media coverage about that. Yeah, I mean, Nancy- it's just, it just, you know what it is? It's uh urban liberals are so obsessed with exotic foreign countries because they like to hear them say they hear themselves say the words when is vela like the bodega they like to hear themselves saying that stuff so but they don't talk about the coup that's happening in their own backyards uh yeah nancy pelosi just did a coup to the house of representatives She's, exactly was she the leader a year ago no it just shows the way that we process information it's just interesting to me uh, uh keep feeding matt you got you got any other uh news weezer's new covers album all right, so when Weezer does it, it's a cover album, but when rappers uh, sample music, it's stealing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about uh, you? You alluded to it uh, earlier. How about um, like, should we still listen to R. Kelly's music? Okay, you're gonna listen to R. Kelly, but the everyone's favorite classical composer Wagner was literally a Nazi, and everyone listens to Wagner. I can't go outside without seeing people drive by and blasting Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You can't like, go to a party without yeah. hearing uh, Flight okay. of the Valkyries. Gilbert and Sullivan, probably pedophiles. They were English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. I wonder why. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Davos. A uh, few world leaders meeting at Davos right now. What do you got? It's interesting got that? that everyone's criticizing Davos for being out of touch, yet they probably go to dinner parties where they uh, discuss identical topics. <sighs> Flawless victory. Undefeated. Have never lost a game in 2019. Guys, if you're listening to this, you and your families probably do some weird shit where you go to Stonehenge because your dad's in the Green Party. And everyone hates those arguments you get in at the religious festival at Stonehenge that you all go to, everyone who listens to this show. Well, this is our argument guide for your Stonehenge, the, the holidays. The real holidays are coming up, and you're ready for those arguments at Stonehenge with your dad who's in the Green Party. Let's go. This is, uh, yeah, you will be undefeated. At um yeah the whatever pagan uh, holiday <laughs> yeah, you're, you're celebrating you're all pagans all in the green party all that shit your mom is a producer in ancient aliens you're into all that stupid shit and you have arguments at your neo pagan holidays so you know just get ready we're getting you in combat mindset and you will be the family champion uh, contrarian take generator uh, Kamala Harris announces candidacy for presidency in 2020 everyone uh, everyone's saying Kamala is a cop all right now we're talking. Well, you see, fair or foul? Well, most people who run for president, they literally got started by being elected hall monitor in middle school, so they're technically all police officers. Is it is it fair to bring up her record as a prosecutor uh, when she runs for president, though? Um, no, because if you think about it, okay, what was Bernie Sanders before he was a U.S. rep? Uh, unemployed. No, he was the mayor of Burlington. Okay, he probably levied hundreds of thousands of dollars in zoning violations on people. Why is it better to take money from people than to imprison them? He basically imprisoned the town with his zoning <laughs> restrictions. <laughs> Yo, all of the citizens of Burlington, Vermont, were they were his Bernie's prisoners. prisoners. They yeah. were Bernie's prisoners. Yeah, so you know, have fun with that. I don't even support Kamal Harris. I'm writing. I'm writing in um, Mo Udall, even though he's dead. He's the last good senator. I won't explain why. I was going to explain your fucking block, pussy. <laughs> Get fucked. Oh, 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 o